Welcome back this evening, friends. I, I just noticed those, those bananas, those are getting made into uh, banana bread. It's going down. I got some more bananas there together. Banana bread, uh, all the banana bread's happening, but that's not what this video is. This video, I got distracted by my bananas. Welcome, my name is Jay Morrell Stewart. Welcome to Large Family Table. I help all kinds of mamas feed all their people a whole lot of different ways. And in this video, I am going to share with you five incredibly easy and frugal and delicious instant pot dinner recipes that you are gonna love to make for your family. I'm gonna make these on like the same portion side. No, I'm not. I'm gonna make mega and lots. I will have links in the description of this video to go over to largefamilytable.com get the full recipes all of that tonight night number one we are doing instant pot lazy lasagna now I do everything large family style my recipe that I have for this says two to three pounds of ground beef I think I have a four and a half pound package of ground beef that I set out to defrost yesterday into one of my garage refrigerators I'm gonna use that for this recipe I'm gonna of course mega and lots it a little more than even my typed out version of the recipe but you can also find find the same numbers in this description so I know we're doing lazy lasagna tonight and I think tomorrow night we will be doing instant pot chicken and dumplings yum so just so many good recipes stay with me let's cook this all up my video is sponsored by StoryWorth. you can get started with StoryWorth today with no need to pay shipping and ten dollars off you just go to storyworth.com forward slash large family table. StoryWorth is an online keepsake experience and at the end of it, you get to pick a family member you share this experience with. StoryWorth is the middleman and helps pull all the info together. And then at the end of the journey, you get a real printed book. So I am doing the StoryWorth experience with my mom for Mother's Day. She is getting email prompts every week from StoryWorth. They just have questions that I would never think to ask. And then she is able to type type her answers, type her novel, or type her short sentences. More like on the wordy novel side, because you know that's how, of course that's how Jay Morrell's mom would be as well, get it honest. And once we're done with this experience, then I will have the hard copy book for our family memories. Super special. Now let's go get this ground beef. Here's my recipe for it up over on the blog. Here are my ingredients for it. My hamburger was not defrosted, but I am going to uh, cook it up real quick in this instant pot. And usually if I'm defrosting things and have a little more time, I do the cold water method. I just ran some water over this real quick to get the plastic off. Be cooking that up on the saute method for a bit. This ground beef will come to know who's boss here in a few minutes. Great way to cook meat from frozen on the saute mode. I've just left the lid on it while I've been doing other things. I don't think I can even use my chopper quite yet. Now I'm cooking multitasking as I always do with my videos it seems, especially when I get my cooking videos, but one thing go and do a whole lot. So because I'm wearing the same shirt, you will see this shirt many times. I have over on my stove that's done cooking now, but I'm waiting for my jars, my 30 pounds of ground beef for canning. I contemplated for a moment using that ground beef in this recipe, but I thought, no, 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 stay, stay with the amounts, amounts you wanted to do. So I got that ground beef out of my freezer and I've cooked it over there on the stove. My jars are done sanitizing, the little sanitized button is blinking at me. When those are done, I will be canning the 30 pounds of ground beef, but never fear, I've cooked all kinds of meat start to finish in my Instant Pot here as well. And even though that ground beef was frozen, it looks like it's it's almost done. I don't think it's even been 10 minutes yet. My recipe calls for two onions. This was a large onion though. If your ground beef, oh, I can feel the onion already get in my eyes. If your ground beef is already cooked, then you would just add a little oil to your Instant Pot. Go ahead and on the saute mode, saute up your onions since my ground beef is being cooked right now. I'm going to just add my onion in with the ground beef. Get that all done at one time. Perfect, while this was cooking, I got my 36 cannon jars out of the dishwasher. Doing my multitasking cooking projects. I'm gonna drain my ground beef now. Okay, so while this meat drains 
for a minute or so. I'm gonna go ahead and add six cups of water this recipe calls for. Now, noodle-wise, we have these really, really fun little noodles. Now, these were individually packed at that discount store that I love called Sharp Shopper, but I've seen these in boxes at Walmart. And honestly, right now, if you can't even find these type of little noodles, you could substitute it with whatever noodle you have on hand, okay? So it's two cans of crushed tomatoes, and I'm also, cause you know, I'm just mega and lots, mega and lots, doing a can of tomato sauce. So I say, I'll have both versions on the vlog. Look, Amelia, when Amelia played in the other pantry and she wrote A's on top of all the food, she could write a little A on. See your little A, that was several years ago. Okay, so we've got a teaspoon of salt, A salt, and then we're doing half a teaspoon of black pepper. So my recipe calls for two teaspoons of dried oregano, two teaspoons of dried basil. I had dried basil, I did not have separate dried oregano. So, mix it up with what I have. Now I have Italian seasoning, which as you know, it's oregano and thyme and rosemary and basil and sage. So, I'm gonna do four teaspoons. Then I am going to also, not written down, add in onion powder and garlic powder, you know this. Actually, see, gotta read my own recipes. I'm like, oh wait, I was supposed to put minced garlic cloves in here. I do have garlic in already. Okay, I must need to open more garlic, so all the more reason. We'll just do a little bit more garlic powder. So we're mixing up the sauce. We are going to then pour this sauce over the noodles in the Instant Pot and then seal the Instant Pot. We're not gonna stir it, no mixing together, not gonna mess with it, we're just gonna let the sauce cover the noodles. Then we're gonna cook it for just a few quick minutes. Of course, it'll take take a little longer because we've gotta bring up this uh, pressure and then slowly release the pressure. Then when we take the lid off, once it's done cooking, pressure released, then I gently mix it, add in cottage cheese, then top it with shredded cheese and then just put the lid on for maybe a minute to melt it all. So there's our homemade sauce. There's our noodles. So as I do, mega and lots, this Instant Pot is too full. My sensible recipe that I should be following, that you will follow, calls for two to three pounds of ground beef. I cooked up a four and a half pound pack, which you can tell in my eight quart Instant Pot. Don't, don't fill your Instant Pot that high. See that? Mm -mm, mm -mm. So I'm gonna take out some of my extra sauce, yep. mark it with a B, put yeah. it in the oven for baby and me. <laughs> That's what I wanna sing now. I will mark it, I will throw it in the freezer. It will live again in some other way. If I wasn't filming this, I would put this in my 14 quart Go West pressure cooker. But we're being sensible, we're using the Instant Pot. So forgive my sins, cooking sins, okay. I have all the hullabaloo in my cooking, so you don't have to. There you go, that's my new trademark. Sometimes my ideas work though. Right, Amelia? Sometimes. Now if I would have been thinking through this more, I could have put that extra pound and a half of meat with my ground beef pressure cannon. Okay, and this is gonna be real easy, putting it on for four whole minutes, but really it will probably end up being 10 to 12 minutes between the pressure building up, pressure coming back down. But in 12 minutes, dinner is served. So, yeah. Here we go. I just took the lid off and started stirring and thought, oh, Jay Morrell, you gotta show it in the video. So here you go. You can see how perfect those noodles are. Just giving it a gentle stir here. Cottage cheese is past the date. Give it the Smith, the Smith test and the sniff test. It's good. 16 ounces, two cups of cottage cheese. And actually, now that it's done cooking, I'm gonna add in some of that extra sauce that I took out because I like to fill things to the top anyway. Okay, now we'll add the shaky cheese. So it's two cups to the top. Okay, that's cheesy goodness enough because now we need dinner. There we go, kid dinner plates, yay. Okay friends, night number two of our easy and amazing Instant Pot dinners. What? I landed on all this canning stuff. So for a bit now, I, uh, I'm canning 14 quarts of potatoes over there and my kitchen has been exploding. I actually had a six foot 
pop-up table here for a while but now I'm on to dinner so now tonight we are making super easy chicken and dumplings yes in the instant pot now I went ahead and cooked my chicken that has been cooking while all this other stuff's been going on but to pull my chicken out so what you'll want to start with is two to three pounds of already cooked chicken throwing it in the instant pot ahead of time I threw this in there frozen no no biggie super easy I also went ahead and chopped about two cups of carrots, a couple stalks of celery, half an onion, because I had a baggie in the refrigerator with half an onion, so there you go. Um, I've got some other ingredients over here. Now these carrots, I'm just gonna chop up. Those will be little side items with our dinner tonight. We've got some minced garlic. We're gonna cook up these vegetables here in about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. And then we also have a can of corn, some chicken broth, some heavy cream and then this would have been about three to four more quarts of potatoes I'm already running two pressure canners you know I always do more than I should and make it in lots so I figured I'm not gonna get a third canner going tonight although I could have because we need to eat dinner this night I thought I am going to put some of these potatoes in with the chicken and dumplings now my recipe that's linked below and that's in the blog calls for a bag of peas. I'll show you the frozen peas we have. Confession time. This one bag of frozen peas we had to use for an ice pack. Peas are great for an ice pack. So we labeled it impromptu ice pack. So meaning don't cook with those. Uh, so that's why there's no peas tonight in the chicken and dumplings. But let's get going with this. Okay, so now... I'm gonna get this on saute. Do my olive oil, eyeballing it. My recipe calls for a certain number of garlic cloves. There's my already chopped up version. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump these in. Just been chopping and peeling things in here for hours. Last thing of the day though. And while our veggies are softening in there and our chicken's just waiting for a minute, what this recipe calls for is two cans of biscuits from the store. I didn't have any store-bought biscuits. I had some freezer biscuits. <laughs> so I set these out. Uh, whether your biscuits are homemade freezer biscuits or store-bought, you're just gonna cut them in some chunks. They cook up actually pretty well in the Instant Pot. So I know it's chicken and dumplings, chicken and biscuits. Uh, these, these just do real well. And I've done it with my homemade biscuits and cans of store-bought biscuits too. Again in the description, I will also have linked my homemade biscuits and freezer biscuits recipe. So a dumpling is just a not quite cooked all the way biscuit. So this is our bowl of just little chunks of biscuit that we will be putting in the pressure cooker once this little bit of prep is done. And so then while we're waiting, I'm just gonna do these carrots real quick. Give everyone some carrot slices with dinner. I'm just gonna add in chicken broth. That's gonna help us deglaze the pot, get the chunks of chicken and veggies and little pieces off the bottom and the sides. Turn it back on here. I figure we probably have another four cups of stock made with cooking that chicken, so that's pretty good there. Okay, so we're adding in a whole tablespoon of poultry seasoning. Just gonna go ahead and add that right on in. And then we have here a teaspoon of pepper. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and just add in one can of corn. Now I'm going to add in all this chicken. I'm adding in some of this other broth too. We still gotta get the dumplings in there. And so whenever you put your little uncooked biscuit pieces in, just wanna make sure they're not sticking together. So we'll give this a stir here in a minute after I plop some in. You don't wanna dump it all in at one time and get one great big biscuit ball, right? We're gonna put it on manual high for seven minutes. When this is all done, I'll show you the last thing we'll add to it. Now I'm gonna get back to chopping my carrots. In reference to the potatoes, obviously since these are soft potatoes, same thing if you were using the frozen peas, which my original recipe calls for, though I'm substituting here, uh, you don't put the peas in until very last once it's done and it's still warm in the pot. Same thing with these potatoes. I'm gonna put it in very last. There we go. Got our dumplings in there. Now I'm gonna add in a cup of heavy cream and some of these potatoes. You can only find my half measuring cup, so two half cups, one whole cup. Now we'll stir that up. Then I just added in the potatoes where I would otherwise add in peas, but look at that. 
chicken and dumpling goodness. So here's my bowl of chicken and dumplings. I also found some cucumbers, so you guys can have those while your dumplings are cooling off. Okay, so I know I've got dishes in the background, been cleaning out the refrigerator, made about seven or eight loaves of French toast this morning, because you know how I do it if I make it once. I'm gonna also get some in my freezer. <laughs> so, been a busy cooking day. I have not done any canning today, but we are getting ready to go pick up the new dairy goat tomorrow. So, lots of things happening here at Sudden Homestead today. And so for our third easy, super simple, and frugal instant pot dinner, we are gonna do sour cream pork chops. Oh yes we are. Let's go. Quickly getting some onion chopped here. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of butter into my Instant Pot. I will turn on saute mode. We will soften up these onions. Then we're gonna set those aside and we will deglaze the pot. Let me just give you a play-by-play -play of things that are gonna start happening here. Deglaze the pot a little bit with some broth. Then we will start going to town. I'm gonna brown our pork chops on either side. Just takes about 30 seconds each side. Won't take too long. I've attempted to get the butter saute in a few times now. I have to keep turning my pot off. Mom like distracted over things. I have two packs of pork chops. Each pack has four pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and do all of those. I'm standing on my head trying to get a container to put these in once they're done cooking. These small little pork chops, kids love them. Haven't had them in a while. Okay, we're getting there, we're doing things. Look at us, we are amazing. Huh. Let's see, we got headless jammer on. Now I'm gonna start browning those pork chops. <laughs> okay, no, I was wrong. This is 1.82 pounds. It was 4.18 a pound. So I'm gonna be cooking about three and a half pounds total. So these are little. If you need more butter when you're doing these, just add it on in. Sometimes I use olive oil, but this is a sour cream and pork chops recipe, so it's real good and creamy with the butter there. I could walk across the kitchen and get a pair of tongs. Yes, I could. I want to see if I can use my wonderful giant wooden utensil here instead. Maybe I'll use my finger. No, don't use that. Don't do that. Perfect. Now, now I'll go get those tongs. You don't need to cook them all the way. Just wanna brown them on either side here. Griddles over there, we still gotta put away from breakfast adventures. So you can also salt and pepper your pork chops. You can also do this recipe in the slow cooker as well. For my viewing friends who don't have an instant pot or some days, so maybe just, if I have the slow cooker out and I need something cooked, Low and slow or long and slow, that is what I will use. Okay, so here's our about three and a half pounds of juicy pork chops that are just browned on either side. Got our cup of broth in there, scraped it around the pot a bit. Now we're gonna put the pork and the onions in here, get the lid on here and cook it for just a few minutes. Just kind of layer these. This Instant Pot is like, let me at them, let me cook up these pork chops the rest of the way. Okay, so now we're gonna put our onions in. So we're just putting it on manual high for five minutes. Of course, it'll really be longer than five minutes because it's gotta build up pressure and then release, but there we go, five minutes or so. Pork chops, yum. Okay, so didn't get to getting my dishes done while I was filming. I have been mommy and hard. And I think I said to put these pork chops for five minutes, it was technically eight minutes. As the recipe over on largefamilytable.com says, we're gonna take everything out. I'm gonna put a little thickener in this broth that has been made here. And then I'm gonna thicken it up a bit and add our little bit of Worcestershire. Woosh, I know, totally, total butcher it. Uh, put a little sauce in there, a little sour cream. Then we're gonna pour those over our pork chops in this pan. Now I'm being lazy mom tonight and we will have carrots and cucumbers with these, but just picture you could have baked potatoes, you could have rice, you could have macaroni and cheese, lots of fun things you could do with this. Okay, now we'll thicken this up. So I'm gonna put it back on saute. Here's how our lovely pan is looking though. Put this broth on saute, it's boiling now. I'm going to put in my thickening agent of choice this evening. You could also use cornstarch if you wanted to. i put some of that in there, whisk it around, then we will add in 
the sour cream. Okay, so now that our sauce is done, nice and creamy, I'm just gonna pour this over the pork chops. I'm gonna keep a lid on it, and then once I get some other things settled here in this kitchen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we will have dinner. Dinner is done. And remember, during all these crazy times in the universe right now, you can still give your mama or anyone very special to you and your family the gift of story worth, but Mother's Day is coming up, so you might wanna be thinking about mom right now. You can go to storyworth.com forward slash large family table for $10 off and free shipping. And this is what the books look like. See, here's one even, stories for my daughter. And so, They've got family pictures they can share. So the question might be, what is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been? And then they share the story. And then they add pictures. And you go back, oh, lots of, lots of beautiful pictures there. Another one, what's something I made of which I am proud? And so they're talking about a garden on a particular street, talking about a fort talking about refinishing a house before and after photos. So it's very special and what a special way to connect, to connect with your family. And also during these times, like I say, StoryWorth will send your special loved one email prompts every week that they will answer in story form. And then after, at the end of the year, then you get a book back to hold on to all those memories. I'm doing it for my mama for this Mother's Day and you can do it for your mama too. Again, that's storyworth.com forward slash large family table for free shipping and $10 off. Now I had every, every, every intention that I was gonna do an Instant Pot dinner every night this week and record it every night. There you go, that would be our five easy Instant Pot dinners. Week did not go like that. Mm -hmm. Trying to think what even happened. But there was a few nights I didn't cook dinner and we just had leftovers and that was okay. But here I am, I wanna get this video to you and I told you I'd give you five. So I gave you three. I'm gonna do two more bonus dinners now to bring us up to five. Jay Morrell, what will you do with these extra two dinners? Well, when I'm filming this, it's Friday night. So we're gonna eat it. It's the weekend. This means I'm not cooking dinner this weekend and that's okay. But I still wanna give you a variety of recipes. My kids are so used to this, they will not mind. So don't worry about me. You pick one of these and make it for your family for dinner tonight. So next up, we are gonna do cowboy casserole. Mm -hmm, yes, we are. You need some ground beef. You need some potatoes. I think in my recipe, we've got red potatoes. You can use any whatever potatoes you got. You need some cheese. You need a few other little things, but let's get the ground beef cooking and let's make a cowboy casserole. I got my bandana on, so yeehaw, let's do this. Ground beef needs to be browned to start with, so I'm gonna go ahead and, again, the saute function can do all the things on this Instant Pot. My package of ground beef is a four and a half pound package. You don't have to use that much. Again, I will be feeding nine people over three days <laughs> with, with these three dinners. It'll be really tonight, I'm gonna put it out, out on the table and it'll be a smorgasbord. And uh, through the weekend, it'll just be whatever's left. There you go, happy mama ain't cooking. I had got this little awesome dragon fellow to try on my Instant Pot lid. So we're gonna give it a go. So what he's supposed to do, I'll link him down below, is instead of the steam going up, the steam would come out the side. Obviously, you've got to watch where your steams are going. But the kids have been wanting me to try him, so I'm gonna give him a try. When you're sauteing, or depending on what you're doing in the Instant Pot, that's where this little Instant Pot glass lid is helpful. So then while the ground beef is still cooking on saute mode, it's a great time to chop up the onion and potatoes that go in this recipe. So it's about two and a half, three pounds of potatoes. You wash and you cube up and then also slice up a whole onion. So that's what I'm gonna get working on now.
Okay, so there's our pile of potatoes and onions. So my original recipe for this calls for kidney beans. I don't have any kidney beans in the can. Of course, I've got kidney beans, dried kidney beans that I can cook. Mama don't got time for that. So I'm gonna replace them with corn. It'll still be fantastic. I do have the uh, diced tomatoes and green chilies. So on top of the ground beef, I did the can of diced tomatoes and two cans of corn. Little cumin, onion powder, and chili powder. Gonna put the lid on now. And we are just gonna do these for a few minutes and test out our little dragon here. We'll do these for seven minutes and let it be. Okay, so while our cowboy casserole is still in the pressure cooker, hooked up my other Instant Pot. See, I can just do multiple Instant Pot recipes, show you guys all kinds of good recipes from the blog. Anyway, I'm doing an Instant Pot ranch chicken and rice recipe. So we're gonna get this chicken sauteing in Instant Pot number two. We are gonna vent this Instant Pot with the dragon on top, but I need the kids to come watch. I'm blowing it away from everybody, but they'll get the point. Whoa. Is that cool? Look at it. I still need to turn it away from the cabinets. You guys go over there. Go over there. Let me turn it a little. I'm trying to get it in the middle of the room and film and make kids happy. Can we do it all? It's flashy. Is, is that cool? It's up fire. You like it? <laughs> That is fun, huh? Okay, so I just took the lid off of this. Now I'm gonna dump a bunch of cheese on it, put the lid back on, let that melt. There you go, whole lot, a lot of cheese. Okay, so now, cowboy casserole time and lots of cheese. Look how good this looks. Now you can put all kinds of toppings. You can set out individual toppings. Different peppers and chilies and sour cream and oh, just anything. Anything you think your family would like to have on some cowboy casserole, and everyone could pick their favorite toppings. So yes, this right here would be dinner, or the creamy pork chops would be dinner, or the pot pie would be dinner, or the ranch chicken and rice. All of these would make a fantastic dinner. But if you live in my house, some nights you get to have Mom's Instant Pot Cooking Dinner Buffet. Yay! Yeehaw. Now, I have a little Instant Pot drama. This is my Instant Pot I got several years ago. I think I was pregnant with Benjamin. I unboxed it here on YouTube, and you know we've used it hard for several years. It sauteed my chicken, then the power was out. I've tried a couple different plugs. I think I just burnt up my original Instant Pot. So I'm glad I have my second one here. I'm gonna pull out, this is where having a couple of those um, inner pots is helpful. So I'm gonna pull out this inner pot that has the cowboy casserole. Then we're gonna go to town finishing up this chicken and rice. Also, cut my finger when I was cutting an onion. So if I was on a cooking show right now, like um, on Chopped or something, I'd already be out, right? We'll talk about this Instant Pot later. But I'm gonna get this chicken out of here. And then we will saute the onions for a moment and then we'll put things together. Now I'm gonna add in chicken broth there to deglaze our pot a little bit. Now we're gonna add in two pa packages of ranch and two cups of long grain white rice. Okay, I'm gonna put this one on for eight minutes. Got my dishwasher loaded, you'll be so proud. Got the bigger stuff still left, but this ranch chicken and rice finished. Opened it up, put some cheese in there. Also, that's one thing I forgot. I need one cup of heavy cream, then we'll mix it all up. All I've got is my half cup measuring cups available right now. So we will just do two of those. So there's the four chicken breasts in here, and then the two cups of rice, which cooked filled about half, so about four quarts total for this eight quart Instant Pot. Here is the Instant Pot ranch chicken and rice dinner. You could also serve this up with different toppings and you could do a salad or other fruits and veggies. I'm gonna quit stirring it now, <laughs> but it's good, it's good, it's real good. We'll be eating it all weekend. Remember all these recipes will be down in the description below. Also remember to go to storyworth.com forward slash large family table for $10 off and free shipping on that wonderful family memories keep sake for you and a special loved one. I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.